Hi, my name is Ming Yao, and in this video, I'll show you how to design parts in Creo Parametric and simulate it in ANSYS Mechanical. ANSYS and Creo Parametric has had a long-standing relationship, so we're fully integrated into the tools. Let me show you how we start. Um, when you have ANSYS and Creo both installed, you should see the ANSYS 19 icon on a uh, tab on top of Creo. If you don't see this, you can install it by opening the CAD Configuration Manager. Once you open CAD Configuration Manager, and sometimes you have to run this as an administrator if you, you don't have privileges. But here we can do Creo Parametric, install the Workbench Associative Interface, put in the information necessary here, and click on Configure Selected CAD Interfaces. This will then activate the Creo ANSYS connection, and you'll see the link here. At a basic level, Creo Parametric and ANSYS connection allows you to bring models directly in from Creo ANSYS. So I'm going to save my part here. That's just part number two. And go ahead and begin a basic simulation. Okay, here we have ANSYS, Workbench, and Creo side by side. I'm going to start by doing a basic static structural simulation. And then I'll show you some of the key features that makes working with Creo and ANSYS very easy for design engineers or designers who are iterating to produce a better design. So we have the two models side by side for this. Let's say we're build, building, designing a diaphragm here. We're gonna just put a, a basic uh, support on two sides and I'll apply a force to see how much it forms. Let's do 500 pounds of force. It's a pretty small part. So we can take a look at deformation of this device, and you can see that it's as you would expect. We have a uh, deformation that looks like that. Now, oftentimes, when you're designing a part, you'd like to make modifications to it. So, we can go ahead and change our model. Oh, I want to do that. I want to sketch on this plane. And I'll put in some reinforcement. We'll make it 10 millimeters long, 10 millimeters thick. And that's, now our model has changed. So in simulation, and this is mechanical, we can just update the model. And all of the other settings are, are Already defined for me, so I can go ahead and solve the simulation. My force is being applied on this side. You can see that the force, same force is applied except on the rib region, and I have a deformation that's much more, much smaller than before. I can make additional changes. So let's uh, sketch on the other side and uh, create a couple of uh, more support. So this allows engineers and designers to interactively modify the, the design and see how those changes in design is reflected yeah, in the simulation. So again, just solve here and it will update the results. The key feature here is the persistence of our model. We remember where the forces and the loads and the supports are defined so that so that you don't have to set up the simulation again. In addition to these uh, single part, we also certainly work with assemblies. So this, this can be done on an assembly level. So that's one part of it that's very useful. Um, one of the key challenges of many designers having to figure out the material properties, luckily for many, in many companies, uh, you're already required to assign proper materials in Creo. So I'm gonna change this part. Right now in ANSYS is set by default to structural steel, which is set here. And you can certainly change the material in ANSYS. However, if you already have materials defined in Creo, for example, let's change this to aluminum. 
Ansys can bring that material properties in to the simulation. Let's take a look at the properties here. Here's a list of all the material property, all the properties that the Ansys can import from Creo, which includes material, name selection, attributes, and parameters. I'm going to turn on material properties, and this then allows me to update the geometry. And now it's made of aluminum, 6061. So solving it again allows me to track the deformation, stress, and other parameters for the results. So you can see that the deformation increased significantly due to the material change from aluminum to uh, from steel to aluminum. Another key part that ANSYS can bring in from Creo are parameters. Creo is a heavily parametric model modeling tool, so we can bring in parameters from Creo. Uh, one of the things, so there are a few ways to bring parameters in. One option is to adjust these values here. So for example, if I select a, a parameter here, I can change the name of those parameters. So I can say this is ANS underscore length. If you put a subscript or if you put the letters A and S or D S before or after the name, ANSYS will filter out these names and bring them in as design parameters. So when I do this, and I update the geometry again, ANSYS will bring in the design parameters along with the geometry information. The design parameters are shown here. So I can make the length and the width of this part a parameter. ANSYS supports all of the param param parametric capabilities of Creo Parametric. So you can bring in any types of parameter you want. Uh, these parameters don't change anything, so I can go ahead and solve the simulation. However, if I go back to my project page, you can see there's now a parameter set. I can specify both input and output parameters. So let's specify the maximum deformation and the stresses as output parameters. And we can assign the forces as a parameter as well. This then allows us to create a param parameters table that, allow that we can use to run through various scenarios. For example, what if my uh, diaphragm was 100 by 150 and I'm doing 75 pounds of force. Hitting update all design here points here runs through all of my simulations and provides an estimate of the total deformation and stresses. So it's a very small simulation, which means it finishes fairly quickly. You can see the changes in stresses and deformation as I change my parametric values. In addition to running through parameters by hand, we, can, we also have an option of using Design Explorer, which allows us to do things like response surface optimization, direct optimization, uh, parameter correlation, and probabilistic design analysis. I'm going to only show one of these, which is a response surface optimization. This starts with an, uh, by allowing you to specify the range of parameters you want to consider. Try length from, uh, let's say, 150 to 200. And the force magnitude from 90 to 110. So clicking on the preview here, ANSYS creates a de design of experiment study where we can run 15 simulations to explore the relationship between all three of my parameters and we can evaluate the results. Now ANSYS has various capabilities including the option of running multiple simulations at the same time. Okay, the simulation has been completed, so let's take a look at the results. Here we did. 15 simulations based on changes of the geometry as well as the load and see how that affects deformation and stress. 
This can be easily expanded to include thermal, fluid dynamics, even electromagnetic behavior, as well as vibrational uh, responses. The next step in our design experiment here, uh, analysis of design experiment data, is to take a look at the response surface. The response surface creates an inter interpolation between all of my simulation results, which gives me an estimate on how the entire design space looks. It's using a genetic aggregation method to create response surfaces, and you can certainly look up details of, of this in the NASA help. Let's take a look at the 3D response surface that it generates. We can look at various things like uh, goodness of fit calculations. You're able to create uh, additional verification points so that ANSYS automatically refines that response surface and there's a lot more technology that you can use to get a better estimate of what's happening. But I'm going to take it as correct for now and, and go to the optimization step. We want this part to, to have a small amount of deformation and maybe um, I want to have it to be fairly short or long. Oftentimes in design you have conflicting parameters or requirements so we want maybe a, a diaphragm that's fairly large but still is lightweight as well as um, have a, uh, a small amount of deflection. In our optimization methodology, we have a number of options available. The easiest one is screening, which picks off thousands of potential designs from our response surface. We can also run a uh, genetic algorithm to look at multi-objective optimization uh, theories, methods. So here we're picking off 3,000 designs from my response surface. We, we have a series of candidate points that ANSYS recommends. And you can look at the trade-offs. For example, if I'm looking at deformation versus equivalent stress, we have on the x-axis, there are 3,000 designs plotted, which gives me an idea of my design space that I've searched. Total deformation on the x-axis, maximum stress on the y-axis. If I want to minimize stress and pick a particular amount of deformation, I can select the appropriate location here. When I click on one of these points, my input parameter adjusts automatically. If I decide to, I can select a point and make this a design point. This will then be, I can then run that simulation, send the data back to Creo. And we'll also look at sensitivities. So deformation is dependent on the length and the width to a lesser extent the force, whereas stress is dependent on the length, width, and and magnitude. Lastly, we have a sample plot that plots 3,000 designs. Each column here represents a particular set of parameters. So for example, I mentioned I wanted a large length, so maybe I want to look at something that's around 180, maybe 190 in length. Filtering out all designs where the values are less than 190, I want to make sure I have a small amount of deflection, so let's minimize this area. And we want to have a be able to tolerate a large amount of force. So you can quickly explore the design to identify a few particular designs. Put this as a design point. So going back to my parameter set, I have a couple more parameters now shown here. Let's run the first one. This one has 188 and 143, which is kind of similar to our current model. So maybe we'll do this one here. This will send a new design into Creo. Through the link, it'll update the parameters so my geometry should change. my dimensions. You can see that this is 193, 142. So this shows you the direct parametric connection between Creo and S Mechanical. And that's the end of this presentation. Thank you.